Hello everyone, I'm Tom, and since this coronavirus disruption started, I've been hosting this vlog, itchy nose, to eat beef jerky and talk to you on the internet. I'm not a food critic, so the beef jerky part is silly and pointless. But this vlog has let me explore some fun ideas with you, especially regarding game design, and I plan to keep doing it. So, today's date is the 20th of October, getting close to... Halloween 2020 and uh, I gotta say guys we're coming into the zone where we've got Halloween followed by Thanksgiving followed by Christmas at the end of the year 2020 2020 generally speaking has been a horrible nasty ugly year for a lot of people and I don't expect it's gonna get better I don't expect that we're going to have a great Christmas why simply because there's not really any indication that here in America the coronavirus is becoming less dangerous or less prevalent. In fact, right now, as of uh, October 20, most American states are seeing an increase in, in uh, cases. Uh, but as, as has been always the case this year, overall it's just a mess with lots of with inconsistent testing, inconsistent tracing, inconsistent you know, standards <coughs> throughout the United States. Um, <clears throat> supposedly right now, Canada, I mean, California says they've got a bit of a handle on it because they do mm, county level micro targeting, but who's to say they were, they were, they, they had a, a summer breakout just like everybody else. So, it's hard to say except that I think that if you're if you wanted to get out and do things and be sociable well the time is not yet and but but I think everyone's terribly worried about Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving is a very profoundly American tradition and an important tradition I know that when my mother was alive having everyone home for Thanksgiving was a big deal a big deal. Uh, my mother, if she were still alive, would certainly be intelligent enough to cancel our Thanksgiving, our person, our in-person Thanksgiving. Uh, but it was still a big deal, and I think it's still good. it's a big deal for a lot of American families. But unfortunately, pulling together the extended family in a living room for several hours is is just asking for trouble in in COVID times, in plague times. Um, so please don't do it. Don't, I mean, find another way. Find another way to do Thanksgiving this year. Uh, because if you don't, there's a good chance or there's a possibility that Christmas will suck because it'll come right after Thanksgiving. Just enough time for the disease to incubate. Bah. All right, well, enough of that. You didn't come to be Debbie Downer about this. You came to see, well, my jerky video is a lot more than just jerky, apparently, these days, starting with the fact that we're voting, and I want you to vote. Please vote. What are we voting about? We're voting about lots of things. You know, Marv DeVoy said the rest of us are depending on you to vote. And... James Madison and the Federalists said, Men of factious tempers, of local prejudices, or of sinister designs, may by intrigue, by corruption, or by other means, first obtain the suffrages, and then betray the interests of the people. So you gotta vote. Vote against those of fractious tempers, of local prejudices, and of sinister designs. I love the fact that in America it's a tradition to vote against somebody. I like that. I'm a big fan of voting against somebody. That's just as important as voting for somebody. But in any case, vote. You got two weeks left. You gotta vote. All right. Um, uh, let's talk about games, which is you know, it's, here's here's where we talk about games. And this time, I would like to talk about something crazy and wacky and fun. This is a picture of a brand called Super Robot Wars. Actually, in Japan, it's Super Robot Tyson, but it's Super Robot Wars. And uh, it's turn-based 
robot battling. And the cool thing about it is basically all the robots, all the giant robots of all your favorite anime get mashed together in one big video game so they can battle it out with each other. That's pretty darn cool in my opinion. Um, and I think Americans generally would love it if they saw it more, but there's a problem. And that is that this rat's nest of licensing necessary to get all of the different robots to mash together into one video game has meant that even though Super Robot Wars is a franchise with literally dozens of cool games over the years, pretty much none of them have come to America because of the licensing issues. All of these various robots get licensed only within Japan, so only in Japan generally can you get Super Robot Wars. And that's, again, a giant shame, because Super Robot Wars is very simple, turn-based. You know, move the robot and then shoot the robot. Doop, 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 doop. Um, but um, they, from the beginning, they poured a lot of effort and time into making the Super Robots have super attacks, which have special splashy graphics and amazing... You know, just, wow! Boy, I gotta see that! Um, and so that has been the tradition of Super Robot Wars since the beginning, is to showcase basically every big robot you could possibly find in anime anywhere ever, smashed all together so they shoot each other, um, and make it worth your while graphically. That's, uh, that's the point of Super Robot Wars. And uh, an interesting thing is this, that the last Super Robot Wars to come out, this last three, have been able to come out on Switch, and they come out with multiple language support, which includes English. So it's not actually a North American release at all. You have to buy an import cartridge, but the last three Super Robot Wars can be played on your Nintendo Switch um, if you buy it from Amazon or something. In fact, I've got the latest Super Robot Wars on order from Amazon right now, so that I can play it on my Nintendo Switch. Uh, you, you've heard of uh, region locks, um, and that's true of older games, but uh, apparently the Nintendo Switch has no region lock. Any Nintendo Switch game made anywhere can be played on any Nintendo Switch anywhere, which means that I could play Super Robot Wars, and they, they have English subtitles, uh, so it's awesome. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Super Robot Wars. Uh, silly fun. This is exactly what I would call that family of video games. And obviously it's intensely popular in Japan because it's a, 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 a franchise that's been going on for over two decades, I'm sure. Very long time. All right. Well, let's do the main event, which is Beef Jerky. So I don't think I have anything super exciting here, but I'm not sure until we eat it. This is Auschnitz Products Beef Jerky. We've had some Auschnitz before, but this is spicy. So we're going to try the Auschnitz Spicy. Got a soda standing by just in case it explodes in my mouth with spice. You know, I'm not a big fan of hot, but so I do this for you. All right. Let's see, I got a piece of Auschnitz beef jerky spicy right here. <laughs> it's a little bit tough, but not bad. You can definitely taste the peppery spice. Okay, here comes the kick. Ooh, okay, that's hot. They say spicy, by that I mean hot. Burns your tongue. Ooh. Yeah. Option is spicy beef jerky. Not bad. I would definitely say it's spiky like a spicy like a spike. I mean they're not I wouldn't say that it's it's bold and complexly flavorful. I would say it's beef jerky with extra spice in it. Definitely hot. <sighs> Let me have some soda. 
All right, let's open up the mailbag. As usual, Adam Para has something to say about my last episode. Um, and in the last episode or two, we've been talking about uh, loot boxes and gambling mechanics in video games. And Adam writes quite a bit here. Let's go through it. He says, That's too bad that people think winning the lottery is their ticket to happiness. I once listened to an article from NPR on lotto winners. They interviewed a lawyer who helped manage money for a lotto winner. The winner told the lawyer to meet him at a gas station. The lawyer found the winner scratching off a long line of scratch-offs he had just bought at the gas station. The winner had already won millions through the state lottery. He just wanted more. I, I couldn't agree with you more, Adam. And you know, it's well understood that lotto tickets scratch an itch, kind of metaphorically, and as you pointed out, physically with the scratch-offs. Um, it's just one of those things. And the thing about itching is, of course, everybody has an itch. Everybody scratches. But we all know that in extreme cases, you could scratch yourself bloody. And that's metaphorically, it seems, what a, what a lot of lotto scratch-off uh, and gambling games do. For a very few of us, the itch is so pronounced that we're driven to do it until we hurt ourselves. Um, interestingly enough, several years ago, I read a book called Addiction by Design, Machine Gambling in Las Vegas by Natasha Dow Schull. It's a really interesting book. It's focused on Las Vegas and how uh, slot machines work and how slot machines are designed to work with the human, with, with the human thought process. And it also has some case studies of people who gamble or gamble too much in Las Vegas. Um, it's pretty hard hitting. It actually goes through it and makes some pretty significant claims about how um, you know average people are. It, it the the Las Vegas gambling establishments are designed to to sweep up average people and to make money not off of just whales who are out to have a good time and spend a million dollars, but the average mom and dad who don't really have the extra forty dollars to to blow, but they do it anyway. Um, but it it certainly goes into that idea of that itch and that tension and that, you know, gotta go back and gotta gotta do that, you know, gotta get my fix, uh, in a way. Um and, you know, I have always looked at it from the point of view of the game designer. You know, I look at, you know, my video games, which don't have any gambling. Um, you, know, you pay your $40 or $50, whatever, you purchase the game, and then it's yours. You play it as long as you want or you don't. And you have as much fun as you can get out of it or don't. But it's all up to you. Uh, that's terribly old school of me, obviously. Modern games... Uh, have embraced a lot of loot box and free-to-play mechanics and gotcha mechanics that we've talked about before. And the kids, I'm sure, are more comfortable um, with those ways of interacting with video games for money um, than necessarily, you know, somebody like me, who, again, you know, we went to a store, we bought a game for 40 bucks, we took it home, transaction done. Um, as kind of an aside, I... As a game designer and a game developer, that process of you know pay forty dollars at the counter and then take it home uh, was like a, sending a message in a bottle. It's, you know, you make the game, you ship it off in a box, and then you never hear from it again. Uh, whereas modern games, with games as a service, one of the benefits and side effects of that is that as the game developer you're allowed to pay attention to and, and, and find out what's going on with your game. Who's playing my game? When are they playing it? How many are playing it right now? What do they think of it? How far did they get? Did they get to level 8? Did they find the secret door? In the old days, no one could ever answer those questions. In the modern age, it's pretty easy to answer those questions. And that can be very important to game designers. Um, certainly important to 
uh, to, to any game developer who runs a game as a service. Um, so, uh, yeah, so yeah, um, I agree, Adam. Lottos and gambling and video games, it's a complex mess and um, not necessarily good for people. At least that's my opinion. All right, well, um, I think that's about it, but I wanted to make sure, in case no one had ever asked you before, to go vote. You gotta vote. Oh my gosh, it's so important to vote. Doc Jesse wrote that the medium of a chosen body of citizens whose wisdom may best discern the true interest of their country and whose patriotism and love of justice will be at least likely to sacrifice it to temporary or partial considerations. It is a right, a duty, and an honor, and it can make a difference. All right, go forth and vote. And I really appreciate you staying with me and watching this silly little beef jerky video. I will be sure to make more, and I hope you uh, watch that too. Thanks. Bye-bye.